Um, there we go. So, teachers teaching teachers, it is May 24th. Others may be joining us as we go, but we have a nice cohort here. Um, uh, Chris, why don't you quickly introduce yourself, and then Charlene, you do that, and Terry, and Bonnie, and then just quick, like, what do you do, sure. what do you teach, and what Hi. are you thinking about AI? Hi, um, my name is Chris Sloan, and I teach high school English and media at Judge Memorial in Salt Lake City, Utah, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, I was just using some chat GPT the other day to help me think about how to structure a writing assignment for my ninth grade, regular ninth grade English students. Cool, cool. Charlie. Yes, um, I'm still over here trying to figure out how to get my camera turned on. Um, oh. hmm. But anyway, uh, I teach uh, middle and high school history and language arts. Um, and I have my first career was in high tech. So I have a crossed interest in this whole AI thing and where it's going. Cool. Bonnie. Hi, I'm Bonnie Bentoon, uh, Bonnie Breeze Bentoon. And I teach students um, English language arts in 12th grade at a special admit magnet school in Philadelphia. The school is Science Leadership Academy at Bieber. Um, AI, uh, my, my students and I were jumping. We were jumping all over the place. They, they love it, I love it. And so we were able to play a lot in it. Cool, cool. Yet your seniors are leaving this week, right? Friday is their last day. And really today was because their senior send off is tomorrow. And they're saying Friday is senior skip day. I said, well, I'm at work. I don't get to skip anything. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. But it's emotional to see those kids go. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Anyway. And Terry, welcome. Um, I taught uh, I taught at every grade level before I retired. I taught as a substitute from K through 12, and then as a teacher, 8 through 12, and then as a, um, <clears throat> I taught at the university level, uh, gen ed courses, introduction to literature and writing. And it's interesting, as people graduate, I heard the other day, this is the most interesting, one of the most interesting things about, uh, <clears throat> about AI. Uh, as it relates to our seniors graduating and most uh, seniors graduating at the university level. Um, it's like uh, somebody said, it's like uh, May, June. In May, if you use AI without, you know, proper safeguards in the, in the university, you might get kicked out. And in June, when you <laughs> go looking for a job, you might not get one because we're down to the down a little bit. Coming. Okay. Okay. Strange place right now with this new technology. I'm looking forward to having you all teach me everything I need to know. <laughs> cool. Cool. Okay. Uh, we have a couple of the people. Maybe I have the wrong home room here. Anyway, let me go out and make sure they find us down here. Hi guys. Uh, when you're ready, we're down in the middle on the middle picnic table. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, there we go. Quick introduction, Bob. Everyone else did. You'll you'll catch up to them in a second. But your introduction. All right. Uh, Bob Montgomery at West Ed. Uh, very excited about the possibility of using uh, now comment in professional learning for educators. Have been doing that, but now with this thinking partner idea. Cool, cool. So this and is David Cole. 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 Welcome, David. Uh, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, everybody. My name is David Cole. I'm in Berkeley, California. I've been working with the writing project off and on for about 15 plus years. I was an English teacher for teacher of writing my first career for 13 years, fourth grade, ninth grade, 12th grade, college, adult ed, then went in, into ed tech and publishing. And I'm circling back around, caught up with Paul and the writing project. So I'm glad to be here. Cool. Welcome all. Um, so I want to kind of just uh, learn from what we did last week, um, which was to have uh, everybody come up with a project, like a little, and, and do it yourself. So to do that, you'll need to be logged into nowcomment.com. Um, 
Fob, I probably the actual no comment, not your instance of it. Yep. Okay. Cool. Cool. Um, and um, actually, Charlene, you'll if you don't have an account there yet, you'll need to get one. But it's pretty simple to do. Um, but uh, okay. So here's here's a little bit about why and a little bit about this room that we're in right now. Um, there is just just very quickly um, number four over there. There's a, um, a a professor up at uh, Alaska Southeast University who is teaching um, a writing and humanities course, and he shared his outline with us. Uh, so that's there to kind of look at. He's he's having his students go out immediately and write with uh, ChatGPT and figure out prompting. And so he kindly let us put that up to kind of follow along with him if it makes any sense. Um, the other tables all have relatively recent articles about um, prompt engineering. Um, and then right under Bob and David right there, there's a there's a um, another link to an, a prompting guide. You may find better ones, other ones, all great. Um, but the kind of funny thing I want to propose here is that we make each of us makes a thinking partner and we learn how to do that um, a little bit. Um, and then we try to apply those to one of the articles here um, and see how that works. Okay. And I, I'll, the other further thing that I've kind of just begun to understand is that when our prompting fails, we learn a lot about how the how the language learning model works right which is an interesting thing in itself um, because we kind of it kind of reveals how what's happening actually um any quick thoughts about what i've just said there or questions uh i have a quick question i'm Good. seeing four five six seven eight so those are the tables we're talking about one two and three or above maybe oh three. okay got it let me all <laughs> now i see them okay uh, that's cool. <laughs> All right. So um, just uh, to, to, why don't we just uh, another quick go around. If you were going to make a thinking partner, and some of you are less familiar with that and others are very familiar, um, it's okay. Um, Terry, let me turn to you first, since you've thought about this a, a little bit longer, maybe. Uh, if you were going to make a thinking partner tonight, who would it be? And, and, and I'm getting a little better at, at making this assignment, if we could call it that. To make a prompt, you need it needs to be a person. It needs to have a personality, a character. Who would the character be? What would they do? What would their assignment be to do with the text? Is it to summarize the text? Is it to make up a poem about the text? Is it to you know there are lots of things in between there, right? And then and then what do you want the output to look like? If we have those three things, we're in pretty good shape. Um, there are other ways to, to parse that, and we'll get to that. But let's just go with those three. Terry. Okay. Uh, I think um, it would be a poet, John Donne, uh, and he would have, uh, um, I don't know the prompt, um, I don't know. That's okay. Find, yeah. Find out something about, uh, you know, a particular uh, thing I'm interested in. And then uh, summarize, summarize that. And then he'd be, that would be the, my thinking partner because I would use the output of that to create a found poem. So they're creating the found. That's your output. Okay. Right. Cool, cool. Chris, or who wants to go next? So, well, could I just yeah. Uh, yeah. say, I think my character is my doppelganger. Um, and is is that okay <laughs> for what we're doing today? It's it's surprising how many students want to do that too. Which oh, is so don't interesting. Okay. No, no, I'm saying go for it. I, okay. It's just interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I say that because when I used it the other day, it was... I think I was bouncing a, some ideas off, uh, you know, a colleague for, you know, to try to tackle this task with some 
a wide ranging group of 14 year olds. Uh, so I, yeah, but I, I did that. So in the spirit of what we're doing tonight, I need to, I'll kind of think of a new uh, thinking part. No, no, no. You could do, you could do your, you could do it yourself. That's, that's well, how cool. about also, yeah. and, and then I'll be quiet. How about like, I'm going to teach adults this summer as part of a master's in tech um, degree. So like I could take on like the role of a generalized student that I'm going to have this summer, right? Sure. Maybe? Or does yep. it need to be more specific? No, let's just see what you're thinking right now and go for it. Yep. Okay. Yep. Who wants to go next? Ideas. I have an idea off the top of my head. Um, I'm thinking about the combination woman of um, like Toni Morrison, um, Maya Angelou and Angela Davis mixed all together um, to build to in response to um, society and culture in literature. Okay. To give ideas um, based upon the literature. I don't know. No, it sounds great. Can you use part of the thesis you're writing to uh, for the prompt? <laughs> I'm just, I'm just joking with you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I, you know, Toni Morrison dabbling in spirituality, Angela Davis more on the political and societal side. Toni with spirituality and literature, Angela, and who else did I say? I said a third person in my. And then Maya just on her poetic wisdom. Let me let me let me push you this way, Bunny. Um, what if what if the three of them had a dialogue? Ooh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Yeah. So we had last week we had three rabbis have Ooh. a dialogue about the text. <laughs> so, you got a Talmudic conversation. Here? Yes, we were that. Yeah, yes. It was excellent. Uh, yeah. David, keep going. What are you thinking? Uh, Paul, it brings me back to the first time we, we, <laughs> we, we connected out here, and I was thinking about a writing coach. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was thinking about Ken McCrory, who figures in the history of, free, I think he's actually the person who invented the term free writing. It wasn't Peter Elbow. But um, yeah, I had some experience at Breadloaf, uh, not in his classes, but around some of his writing groups, and have enjoyed his work and taught with them a couple times. And uh, found his work to be invaluable so i imagine a writing coach that was uh, could be as effective for me as my idea of mccrory was in person so it's it's a little bit like what bonnie's doing in terms of thinking of real, about real people their body of work and how that would simply help me respond where i want to go it also speaks to the kind of writing i would not do like i don't think i would want to like i have to write to the rent stabilization board for where we live tonight i don't really want ken to help me do that but the topics that are more personal and would reveal something about the world. So I'm not sure what I would write about, but I would want to have a writing partner a coach, maybe in the, in the guise of Ken McCrory. Cool. Bob. So I would like to design a thinking partner who support people managers in my organization. So people who are responsible for the development of others, at West Ed. And we have a framework that we've just developed called the CARE framework, which has four domains. Uh, the C stands for collaborative, the A stands for active, the R stands for relationship-based, and the E stands for equity-centered. And so we're trying to develop skills in our people managers that fall into all four of those categories. So I would like to be able to have my colleagues analyze cases of people management, whether it's giving feedback or, you know, doing a work planning session and take the text of that conversation and apply. Maybe it's one thinking partner for all four, but maybe it's four thinking partners, one for each yeah. domain. It's, it is one conversation you and I had in the past, which was, is it, is it like one for each of those letters or is it, Right. Or they, yeah, who knows? Uh, you have to so, test it. So my time. assumption is that I can enable my colleagues to look at cases of feedback conversations or 
work planning conversations or whatever, and they can, um, as a learning experience, apply a thinking partner's understanding of what what qualities are in that text and test their you know ability to think similarly or to use those lenses and practice those lenses themselves through through having a partner to do that. Charlene, do you want to jump in? Wow. Uh, Charlene, are you there? Unmute. Yes. Um, oh, yeah. If you're talking, you're muted. Um, well, sorry, we don't hear you. Okay, maybe we'll check back with her in a second. Um, the the latest one I messed with uh, this afternoon. I want to mess with it more. Is what, what I'm calling an inquiring youth, mm -hmm. um, and I want it to be a young person have a young person's vibe, and so far it doesn't have the vibe yet. But it, it's asking. Um, probing questions about the theme of the paragraph. I'm noticing though from Bob's in particular, but others also that the, the text we're imagining the partner is working on kind of defines who the partner is, but, they, but those partners could be used in any text, right? But it is an, an interesting part of our thinking process. Anybody else notice anything in that go around? I, I, I mean, that was interesting to hear, Bob, to hear your framework. I mean, mm -hmm. it sets out some very distinct buckets. There's expertise, I imagine, and I'm speaking out of turn and I'm in the deep end here, but I'm imagining the training set that you might want to build behind each of your letters in your acronym that would inform your thinking partner, represents a body of work, mm -hmm. and then that stuff sits there. And then similarly with Bonnie, you know, there's this body of work. Everyone's got bodies of work. I mean, I think, Bob, you're framework doing sort of leadership development or skill building and having a framework and a rubric, so to speak, certainly speaks to a workflow and a structure that's quite interesting. Even Bonnie, your thing about three distinct personalities with their disciplinary research perspective and their sort of thinking and their emotional perspectives. Those things are very interesting in terms of setting up an AI to go scour for those, that those lands. The same thing, but, um, it's, it's very interesting when there's a very disciplinary focus, almost like buckets, either by personality or topic, mm -hmm. that lead to the springboard and lead to the workflow. That's, it's very interesting. I'm just it curious. already presumes a lot of interest, information. Uh, can I just, as a point of clarification, Go for it. check my understanding? Are we really dealing with three domains of design here? The text, the thinking partner, and the prompt? Uh, is there anything else, or are those the big three? When you say dealing with, what do you mean? You mean what are, we, you mean what like, are, we, what so are our design what, tools? So what gets sent to, to the model is a paragraph or a sentence that you've selected, a question that you've asked, and then the thinking partner. And we're designing, what we're doing tonight is we're designing the thinking partner, right? Another optional um, field is a description of yourself. Yeah, uh, that's, a, right? that's, yeah okay. that's the fourth domain. That's the fourth, right? Yeah, I don't like that one. So, which I think is getting interesting. Like, I, I, I just as I use it, I, I can sometimes I say something like, um, "I'm really, I'm really just learning about this field or something," or like it, it becomes uh, like you in relation to the text. Not necessarily your bio, um, anyway. But oh. I think I, I think that'll be an interesting thing for us to play with. Um, you know, I'm, okay, yeah. One thing this makes me think. I mean, I kind of wandered off. I was, you know, I, I did creative writing, and so I set up a prompt which has to do with a, a coach that could help me sort of wander into that open space with no direction, find a path. Um, the flip side of that, of course, is this conversation here, and I'm fascinated by how LLMs are going to guide people and what. Um, what open source tools might be useful and safe that could be built transparently in a sandbox. So in the spirit of what Bob you're doing and to some degree what Bonnie's doing with having these focus, I wonder if I'm going to flip it to ask for some technical expertise to make me smarter with engineering. Yeah. It's, it's, it, 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 it kind of sets me up to be, you know, it's like I'm gathering knowledge for my own benefit as opposed to simply trying to find my way, which is an equally important thing to do in terms of voice, but um, 
knowledge acquisition as an exercise is a really interesting thing. And the structure you guys are talking about reminds me of that. It makes me think twice about where I might go. And David, I'm glad you said that because with Paul saying, um, well, Bonnie, you can have them have a conversation with one another, but what is the conversation right. for? Yeah. And so what will, yeah. will it be in answer to? Will it be in action to build an action uh, you know, right. problems and things yeah. like that, almost like engineering social change. Uh, yeah, and you know, it, it, even to be, you know, if you go at the subject, you've already, the amount, the amount of thinking you've already done to frame that question is profound and awesome. Mm. And, um, and unpacking that in that context with these tools seems really exciting because you can't really get to those questions without doing a lot of pre-work. Right. right. Yeah, yeah. Well, is, is another way Interesting. to see, are we are we essentially saying, what's what's the point like who so to what end who cares like i feel like i have a very clear answer to that yeah. those questions i'm trying to build opportunities for for my colleagues to practice noticing and sense making through these cases and mm -hmm. having thinking partners right. helps them you know see other ways that they might you know just get deeper into analysis but i some of the scenarios i've heard tonight i'm still wondering well to what end what what's the what's the sure. learning goal that other than just play you know playing with AI and yeah. having an AI experience? So, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, I was responding. Eighth, I was responding eighth, to that too. Yeah. Eighth graders asked me the same question when when I presented this to them. Yeah, and, mm -hmm. and you know, it's an even yeah. even interest more. I, you're here, great. Hey, it's working Charlene, now. you're okay. better. We see you too, Charlene. <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't okay. know. It works. She went out and came back, and yeah, okay. I totally. Anyway, um, and so let me mm -hmm. just uh, finish that point. So, uh, the, um, let's keep asking the question: like, to what end is, and what 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 are we experiencing with this? And Bonnie, I I, I would love to hear what your students are saying too. Um, I I don't know. I do know that he, I do know as a reader. When I when I play and I, I make a poem out of a paragraph or something, there's this moment where I'm reflecting on wait how did they make that poem out of that paragraph? So I'm thinking about the paragraph. I'm thinking about the poem. There's there's this um, it, I, it it takes me back to Stanley Fish's uh, effective stylistics, right? If, if we can go to that, right? Like. Um, there, there's, there's a moment of play and that, that I think does get at comprehension too, but it's only a guess at this point, and so I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. and that, but that's a good guess, Paul, because that's something I was asking the students as they're transitioning away from me was after reading that short, short story to create a thinking partner that will help them think through the text. Um, so, you know, who do, who do they think and what do they think right. um, they need in order to get help? Uh, so I, it, I'm not, I'm, I don't know how it's going to come out because it's due, but and then there's no way for me to talk about it after, but I wanted to see what they thought they needed to provide them help to understand text. Yeah. I loved what Isaiah set up, by the way, the historical reference um, i didn't but, even read any of no, it no, okay yeah. <laughs> yeah so we'll get to that um i want i want to kind of this we could keep going right but i, I want to get us to playing if we can and mm -hmm. doing um i i brought up a screen a little while ago um you want to go to your library on now comment when you log in it should go directly to your library on the lower right side of your library i'm showing this right now mm -hmm. is um no, I'm showing the thinking partners right now. But on the lower right side is yeah, is yeah. the thinking partners, and then you'll find manage partners here. Mm -hmm. um, I want to so I'm going to hit that, and it comes up here with all the partners that are public at this point. Um, lots of consideration about. Never mind. I'm, I'm sorry. How how to make a middle group, but between public and private, but um, you want to go to new thinking partner. And I think 
this is all showing up and if it's not working for you, let me know. You have to give it a name. You have to give it a short description. I've asked my tech guy, his name's Jeremy, to, to change that short description. I'm going to tell you right now. I wanted to say a short description about what the partner does with the text. Right? Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So it's not a it's not a description of what they're wearing, right? Or even their personalities. It's yeah. a description of what th that partner is going to do with the text. Okay. Okay. And then the prompt, I'm just gonna remind you of the three things. Description of who they are. Um, again, um, what they're doing with the text and what and then what the output you want to it to be. And be very specific. Like do you want three paragraphs? Do you want three lines? Do you want Oh, you know, right. I, and, and, and Bonnie, I apologize that I, I, we learned from watching your students do it, that we should have told them this too, but it's okay. No, but that's what we were doing. We were, yeah, 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 we were learning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, you know, could you say that one more time? The short description is. A short description is a description of, and this, by the way, does not go to the LLM. It's just for us. Um, the short description is a description of what the partner does to the text with the text. So it could, right? So if the name of it is paraphrase, the short description says restates the the paragraph with other words. Okay. Okay, and then um, and then and then go ahead. Is who they are. They're who they are what they do to the text, which is sort of an extension of the short description, and then what you want the output to be. Again, and here's the deal. If you just get one sentence in there <laughs> and test it, that's fine, right? So this is a creative writing assignment. <laughs> do with, do with the, all of that assignment I gave you, whatever you want, test it out and see how it works, all right? All right, I have a question as well. Sure. Um, so uh, from what you're describing now, all of these prompts, all these questions are going to be dealing with an existing text? It's It could be any text. Um, okay. Yes, we're going to choose one together. I, you know, I, I'm going to, okay. right? Okay. Just because if we do that, we can then sort of all look at one paragraph and see what our different partners do. Okay. Okay. But it could deal with any text at any other point too. Okay. Including your own, by the way. But okay. All right. Happy to hear questions, thoughts, problems, issues as people are working. And then we're going to uh, have that thinking partner help us think about one of the uh, seven or eight things around on the tables, right? Yeah, let's just go to the first, the first one. Okay. Yep. Hey, hey, Paul, I apologize for this. I missed no. the uh, getting myself to my new thinking partner. It's been a while since I've been on, on now comment and now mm -hmm. I'm back. So I need a, I need a tune up. I could do this through chat so people don't have to follow along or whatever. It's the best no, way. no, it's okay. Uh, why, why don't we step out to the room just to the left and we can talk. There you go. Hi. Yeah. Hey. So what do you need? Uh, I just got to get myself to a new thinking partner. I'm on now. Okay. Comment, logged in. Okay. The library, you're in your library? I am. I'm in my library now. Comment. Okay. I've way just got down. Two things. Yeah. Way, way down, down to the left yeah. is a long uh -huh. list of thinking partners. And then there's manage thinking partners under that. It says manage partners. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Click on that. And then I get, yeah. Create new thinking partner. Great. Yeah. Okay. okay. And, and uh, so, yeah. So we, you said we're going to be commenting on a, a, a shared text or are we going to go find texts of our own to comment? Yeah, I think, I, yeah. So it just seems to me, given the time limits, if we just use one text, it's the one we used last week too. Um, okay. Then we'll all sort of be have the same paragraph that we're, Using our thinking partner on, although Got it. although that that loses the advantage of, you know, the way Bob was picking a text. But 
Yeah. Sure. Yeah. No, I think um, it also, yeah, I won't go, for example, and ask for guidance on how to create a safe open source LLM for a sandbox. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stay with Ken McCrory or some of that. So it's just the text, right. the, the text is, the text is a very breezy kind of um, description of a young woman who um, was an English major and became a prompt engineer. Um, so oh, it's, it's okay. just a narrative like that. Yep. Okay. Got it. All right. I just want to give a sort of time frame, just uh, maybe five more minutes. Okay. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. It has to be a first draft that you can test. Mellow. By the way, just so you know, um, you can go find a text um, once you have made it and test yours out even before I make it public. You can make your own private one. You can test it yourself. Um, I'm suggesting you do that with the article at picnic table number one. Okay. This okay. When you're ready, no rush, people. I'm not. I just, as I see them come up, I'm making them public, though. <laughs>
All right, two and a half minutes. If you've finished making yours, you can go up to picnic table one and I'll sort of give you guys up there when you're ready. You found you found this article by clicking on her face. Yeah. So you wanna you wanna find the find find the article by clicking on this young woman's face right here. And be reading and then I'll show you as we get other people here how to click on the Ask AI. You could test yours, you could test other people's too, but test yours. Um, Want to remind you that you can always, um, once you get a, a the results, you can ask for it again. But I'll be back to check in with you. Okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah, can we do that, Paul? I mean, Bonnie's raising a good point. I would go the same so, direction. Uh, no. What's the, I didn't hear the point. I was up in the other room. Sorry, category. I chose creative generation and transformation, but it defaults to that information comprehension and general knowledge. It so, does? It shouldn't. Um, yeah, at, well, it's the top thing at, at the category. Oh, oh, you mean when you try it? No, when you, oh. before you even push create, huh. it has a drop down menu for category so automatically it's in information comprehension and general knowledge yeah it shouldn't be right it, yeah i mean you how do you know i mean you could i think it's okay in its placement giving the creator a choice after having written all this text what topic area of category should this go to? Right. I, I think it's cool where it is. Okay. So okay. I was asking, is it okay if I use it? Right oh now? yes, please use it. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, and and I can change it if I think it shouldn't be. But yes, <laughs> please cool. use it. Um, and uh, yeah. So when you're ready, come up to picnic, picnic table one, and uh, and or you can just click on yeah, just so we can hear each other up there. Okay. Wow. There we go. There we go. Um, all right, you want to click on that uh, young woman's face, mm -hmm. um, and you will go to the now comment article that we used last week, and I'm asking you to use this week to kind of uh, just a place, uh, a place for us to mess around mm -hmm. and test your thinking partner. Um, I'll give an example of that if anybody wants that. But if you want to go ahead and kind of figure it out yourself, um, I'm just making other people's public here so that. And, uh, that's the wrong one. There we go. Good. Charlene's is there, and David Coles is there, and Ben. Okay, great, great. Everyone's up now. Okay, let me just, you're all here. Charlene, do you want to join us at picnic? Yeah, there you go. Just up a little bit. Perfect, perfect. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay, we're all here again. We're clicking on that young woman's face, and that is, and now I can 
share screen again, and I'll watch what you're doing in a little bit. Um, I'm going to go through the process just because Charlene and others may not know it. But if you're doing it, you don't have to watch me do it, but just so you know. So I am going to click on there, and that is going to come up. OK. So if you're not familiar with now comment, um, what happens is you come to, let's say, paragraph, let's say paragraph 9. Um, and I want to comment on this paragraph. I would double click on that, um, the number there, or I could double click on a sentence, either way. And then I would summarize what my comment's going to be and then make my larger comment below. Um, we're asking you to ask AI. So you click Ask AI. Then you get a drop down menu, and you should be able to find yours somewhere in that drop down menu. Mm -hmm. OK, because I made them all public. <laughs> Neil Gaiman, writing coach. Cool, cool. OK, um, three divas and noir. OK, got it, got it. Metaphysical poet. Um, OK, so you could play with your own. Um, you Here's what you'll need to do once you, let's say. What if you don't like it? What if you don't you use, you, use your own. You just you can I, use that. No, I used it, but I don't like to use it. You could you could go back and iterate, um, but but it takes some time to do that. I'm going to go to the um, inquiring youth because that just to show you. Um, and then I'm going to ask a question. It could be as simple as please help me understand this paragraph. You can leave the um, the note about the reader blank, or you can fill it in if you'd like. Up to you. Then you hit continue. Once you get a result, you get a choice to resubmit. Um, when you do that, you can change the question or not. Um, and then you'll have to decide. All right. So here's my result. Um, all right. And then I can hit resubmit. And when I do, I can choose which of these two is more helpful, honest, and harmless. Okay, when you, um, and let's say I select second one, um, I wanna say that given, given our numbers here, it's okay that if you hate the one you did, it's okay, we're gonna learn from it, right? Um, hit, hit start conversation. And then we can go over and uh, talk about them as as we're going through. So I see. So try to get yours up on the right side. I'm refreshing. Oh wow, Chris Sloan, you um, You did now news hound and then you did news hound in reply. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. So try to finish in the next couple of minutes mm -hmm. so that we can look at each other's. Um, and I want to say something again that I said at the beginning, and I do, I'm more and more understanding this. When the prompts work, we learn something about prompt engineering. When they don't work, we learn something about large language models, right? And how they work. <laughs> so failure is good, success is good, and it's usually somewhere in between, right? <laughs> and as you're finishing, let me mention that I took half a day and worked with Christina's yoga idea last week and learned a lot about Iyengar yoga, <laughs> thought a lot and used AI to help me um, make connections between reading and the principles of yoga and, and kind of put them together and came up with something that I think is pretty successful, but it took a lot of trying and a lot of learning um, to get there. And we're doing this quickly and that's all good. 
Um, I think I can go to sorted by recent and then see what's here. Hmm. Newest first. Is it not? Okay, how are we doing? Um, let's uh, let's uh, I'm looking at the clock, wanting to have enough time to talk about them, um, and so pull away from your own creative process a little bit. Let's look together. I've pull, um, I'm looking at Chris Sloan's here first. Chris, do you mind going first? Sure. Oh wait, you uh, did the inquiring youth there. Let me. Uh, well, um, I did a character called Newshound. Um, yeah, let's do that one first which uh, is kind of a version of um, some of the high school journalism students I teach are actually pretty, you know, up on the news and, and like to read the news and that kind of stuff. And you use paragraph consumer. eight? Sorry? You use paragraph eight? Uh, yeah. Do I have that right? Okay, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you and want to just so, read, read what you came up with? Yeah. You want me to read the comment? Yes. Okay. Um, so my news hound asked, how long has prompt engineering been around? And then the news, I had the news hound talk to itself because there could be more than one news hound mm -hmm. in the room. Uh, at, you want me to read that? Yeah, if you don't mind. Yeah. yeah, at the time, no one was talking about prompt engineering, though its roots go all the way back to the dawn of computing in the 1950s and the advent mm -hmm. of both artificial intelligence, AI, and machine learning. Over the past few years, advances in natural language processing, NLP, have accelerated the development of prompt engineering to the point that businesses can now quickly and easily generate copy using AI tools. And then I use the inquiring youth to kind of question what, what does that mean for my... But you also had it in, you, you had it ask itself again? So yeah, yeah, I did, yeah. Because and it, and it, it gave five things here? I'm looking at it now. Yeah, so it's just like, well, what are some of the... Give me some examples, in other words, of businesses that use this. Oh, oh. Which, you know, two kids could be talking about is how I imagine that. Um, and so you've got automotive industry, the banking, hospitality industry, retail industry, education. And so that then made me think about an inquiring youth might think, yikes, what does that mean for potential jobs for me? Mm. Huh. Which, wait, oh, it's here. Mm -hmm. And does, it, does the inquiring youth do that or not? I'm just looking quickly. Well, uh, I mean, it talks about how it's going to change. Let's see how do we do it? Yeah, cool, cool. So, quick, quick uh, around the thoughts. Uh, what do you think? You can start, Chris. What do you think of what you got back? <laughs> I think it was useful. Um, I guess when I made the news hound, I was wondering how how it might how good it would be to try to pull in contemporary or historical connections. Mm -hmm. It did a decent job of that, right? I think. Seems like it. Yeah. How did How did you ask it to do that? Um, uh, I I forget my description. Of okay, that. we'll go look. <laughs> yeah. 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 So who wants to go next? Sorry. Just, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Quick question to Chris: What, mm -hmm. what was the role of the text in your learning journey? Mm. Um, the text was. It was that paragraph about this person kind of entering a career. And so um, I, I guess the kids were kind of questioning this as a career. If that answers your question. I don't I know. Mean, but, Bob, do you want to ask that question again? What do you mean? Well, so you yeah. highlighted some text to apply mm -hmm. your thinking partner to. Uh -huh. And I'm just wondering, did, did that text give you just permission to just use AI to probe AI to probe AI, or did you actually have something in that text that really spurred spurred something that you were seeking clarity on? Uh, I guess the anecdote is what drew me in. Okay, okay. So, so, that, so that, that, that created a question in your own mind. You say, okay, I'm gonna ask a question, not so much to analyze that text, but so much just to go off on, on, on a jag, on, 
on this. Cool. Yeah. Right. Yep. 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 Uh, Bob, do you want to keep talking and talk about yours? Well, yeah. I just uh, I just applied my thinking partner. Which so paragraph was the, ten. Yep. Go ahead. Yeah. Paragraph ten. I, I got trying to navigate to it. Um, if you click <clears> inside <throat> your your comment, it'll it'll pop up to paragraph ten. Yeah. That's true for other people too. Weird. I can I can see my oh there it is okay I had to click more yeah I asked the do you mind reading it for us yes yeah. yeah, so I, I I created a collaborative people management thinking partner and I defined what that meant and I asked the question how is collaborative people management evidenced in this text hmm. and the answer is this example of collaborative people management is evident in the way the founder of the company offered mm -hmm. advice and guidance to the person who was hired as a contractor. The founder provided the guidance that helped the individual understand the requirements of, uh, of the job, allowing them to develop a solution which eventually resulted in a full-time job offer. This demonstrates that the founder was willing to work collaboratively with the person they had hired to ensure that the best outcome was achieved for both their business and for the employee. Mm -hmm. So it was an artificial application because the text was nothing particularly collaborative, but I just applied it that's what happened what do you think uh jury's still out i don't know okay could, right. could, could, it could, here's the biggest question i have is how do you uh -huh. do this across chunks of text versus a, a little paragraph of text so i don't know how yeah that's going. yeah it's, a, it's uh, yeah and you and i discussed this another day so you'd have to set it up so that each paragraph yeah it's massive. yeah but how fast yeah but the, the, that's yeah, I yeah those yeah that's a bigger question. Big question. Yeah, it's fine. Um, and it's a good one. I I just want to identify though that what the kind of partner or the kind of response you got is is a particular kind that I'm noticing. Um, and when I talk to uh, Ben Kalik about how how to think about the habits of mind, she's mm -hmm. thinking that the habits of mind might be what they might do is identify examples of, right? Mm -hmm. In that text, there's an example of asking good questions or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's what the partner would do. So I think there might be a whole category of partners that yeah. identify, here's an example of whatever it is in the text, right? Well, there's the text that is providing examples and then the that, but I like what I think you're saying, which is to ask the question, is this a good example of? Mm -hmm. My prompt was, what evidence do you see of this practice? Which yes. may be not as good as a prompt that said, is this a good example of? Right. And I'm wondering, yes. And I'm wondering that in that, can the prompt do both? I don't know. Yeah. Can it say it's a good example of, and then say, if it were stronger in this habit of mind or whatever it Ooh. it would do this right nice i like that so, yeah but i don't know if it works right but yes who wants to go next i'll say i didn't like mine I'm okay gonna, good good I'm Where is paragraph 12. you're in paragraph 12 okay mm -hmm. and i don't know if it was the question really i was focusing on the writer I got offered a one month contract to work. Did, did you, did you post it up? I don't see yeah, it. I have two now. So, and I found out you have to refresh. Refresh. Okay. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Good. good. Yes, yes. Go ahead. Keep talking. Um, I, I wanted it to focus on how a one month contract was going to help somebody. And I don't know. I probably didn't ask the right question. And then it talks about a founder and explaining prompting and spelling as a spell. And so um, I, I don't know if I asked it the right question. I don't know if I'm completely done creating the prompt. I don't know if it the system, the AI was able to read the personalities of three women and as individuals and then as a collaborative along with the author. Um, but mm -hmm. I don't like the responses at all. Cool, cool. Um, so did we learn anything about the model? And I think what I, I think what we mean by that is if our prompt is not good enough, what will the model do, right? 
nothing, it's act like it knows something and it doesn't know anything at all. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Artificial ignorance. <laughs> and sometimes never seen some, that before. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes it goes in and, and tries to continue the text, right? When our prompt isn't good enough, which is interesting too. But um, like, so I think when, so thank you for your failure. <laughs> but, mm -hmm. but, but I think what we learn from the failure is like what happens naturally to these, right? And, and so we, and, and, and then that, I think that makes us think about why we're doing these prompts and it's so we don't get that nonsense, right? Yeah. So we get something better. Well, it sounds like then the core skill that we're building here is prompt design. <laughs> And, and once we are able to do great prompts, then we can start to learn toward other skills. Like, am I, is this a good example of, but really right now we're just trying to get good at prompt design. Mm -hmm. I think that's right. And, and, and sharing, uh, and, you know, as we begin to share them, I think that's useful. Just a, a quick um, development note. I'm not at all satisfied with only like private ones that only you can see and public ones that everybody can see because it gets wrong. So I, I want to design it just like now comment does so that if you're the direct, if you're the admin of a group, you can share those with that group and then that group can play with them. Mm -hmm. But just to say, um, and, and so with that in mind, I had students take in pictures of what they created before they sent it to you because right. I told them I wouldn't be able to see it or look at it. Right. But I made them all public for a while. And, but then the eighth graders are like, these don't work. I don't like them. <laughs> so, anyway. good. Good. Yeah, yeah. No, I know. Yeah. So Charlene, do you want to jump in with yours? How, <laughs> just, yeah. I mean, it's interesting what you came up with here. <laughs> yes, it is. So um, I, my uh, thinking partner. Paragraph 11, Gaiman, by the way. Yeah, go ahead. Is Neil Gaiman as a writing coach. And uh, the, the prompt I gave it to this. Is there music one, along with it? Sorry. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, it's paragraph 11, which itself is very brief. Uh -huh. It's uh, one sentence. And mm -hmm. I said, well, turn that into a fable. And it goes <laughs> on and on and on forever. <laughs> and um so it's it's quite uh, fascinating like my overall uh, goal would be to to this coming year i am going to be teaching writing mythology and folklore folk tales and I'm, mm. neil gaiman to me is a master storyteller yeah mm. uh and mm. so if he could look at their text or he could look at or give him a request to create assignments that would help the students flesh out characters in different, you know, different archetypes, um, then that would be really helpful to me. So what do you thought this, is it a Neil gaming game? How do you say this? Is it like his text or not? Do you think? Well, um, it is, uh, and that would depend on your prompt, right? Yeah, but but I mean, he, I find a lot of AI, the the, the small amounts I've done, are mm. very vanilla flavored in their responses, right? right? <laughs> well, so and this is a good example of that. It says, "Oh, we're talking about something to do with mythology or fables or something." And so, what can we make out of this one sentence? And that's what I came up with. And Charlene, you could ask of your fable if this is a good example of a neil gaiman fable mm. <laughs> yes yes great idea yeah now but, but i want to ask the question about does this help you as a reader on <laughs> like does this fable help you understand that one sentence in any in any way or does it help you play with the sentence or see it differently or think about it and it's okay uh, if it doesn't <laughs> Yeah, no, to me, it, it helps me, you know, like it, it, it takes it from this very factual presentation of I did this to mm -hmm. this imaginary world and all the things that surround that and working with magic. And, and I think for at least for me, AI does have a sense of magic about it that yeah. um, probably fits into that. Yeah. Anyway, cool. I, I want to try to get, I, I, if people have to leave, I get it, but, um, and thank you. Uh, but I want to see if we can 
hear some others. Mm -hmm. uh, who else would like to jump in? Uh, Terry, did you get one here? Is Terry still here? Yeah, he's here. Okay. He's, uh, he, you're he's muted, speaking. Terry. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Number two on the key, on the keyboard opens up. The, there we go. It's supposed to, but it didn't work for me. Oh, really? Okay. Mm -hmm. So, Terry, you messed with paragraph eight. Oh no, that you did that last week. He does have one in here, though. Oops. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay, I, I, navigation in this is a little buoy for me sometimes. Okay, cool, cool. where where is your new one? Oh, here is this it here? Uh, Metaphysical poet, I found it. Yeah. Uh, so this is paragraph seventeen. Right. Okay, go for it. Um, you want me to read the? Yeah, why not? I love the mad scientist part of the job where I'm able to come up with a dumb idea for a prompt and see it actually work. As a poet, the role also feeds into my obsessive nature with an approaching language. It's a really strange intersection of my literary background and analytical thinking. So what, what I was looking for was uh, some text that uh, was metaphorical. Mm -hmm. And I said, in my response, my comment was, uh, there are several metaphors here, mad scientist, dumb idea, obsessive language approach, strange interaction. And what I wanted, that, my that's your, that's your human response. That's my human response to that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and I wanted, I wanted the uh, my partner to give three explanations for the metaphors in the text that then create a found poem related to the metaphor that you explained. And uh, it came up with three metaphors. And they are related to the text. And uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, they are. Okay. Okay. Uh, Sometimes and, it's and, not. <laughs> yeah, and and <laughs> the found the found poem was um, a bridge too far. <laughs> you know. Uh, what is I, it? I, Can you read it? Yeah, found poem. Mad scientist, intense and invested. Dumb idea, foolish and dreaming. Obsessive language approach, intense and devoted. Able minds creating a work of art, sacrificing sanity to unlock the key. Undertaking work too bold for heart and it's like it's reaching and stretching and just is not getting the idea of a metaphor so it's a basic mm -hmm. misunderstanding of what how poets use metaphor you know the mm -hmm. use of uh of the idea here okay so and, i just want to i so i just want to put a pin in that idea so what you just said there is that the the language learning model basically misunderstands how poets use metaphor. Right. Understands what a metaphor is, but uh -huh. cannot understand how they use metaphor. Okay. So, yeah. so my question back is, can we create a prompt that will teach it that? <laughs> I, gave, I, I did this offsite uh, using uh, chat GBT uh -huh. uh, this week. And uh, what I found was that I needed to intervene at some point. <laughs> <laughs> so I would let it come up with the three explanations, but that's as far as I would let it go. That's when uh -huh. I created the found poem. Uh, and uh, it's a pretty good found poem, if I do say so myself. So, <laughs> so Terry, you, you can't teach AI what a metaphor is? I'm not sure. I mean, just based on this, it's, it's pretty far away. Okay. Just to, that seems to me that that seems like the grail quest, right? To get the thing. To, yeah, no, it is. It is. Yeah, yeah. Figurative, it's figurative language. You know, literal literal yeah. language. It gets figurative language. Hell, I don't get it some of the time. And, <laughs> no, it's. Uh, by by the way, over on Youth Voices, a, a, a way to get feedback to your own writing. Um, I did create a figurative language template. That gives you five cool. metaphors, five similes, five whatever, you know, the different kinds of <laughs> figurative mm -hmm. language, um, which I think is interesting because it picks up on the themes of your writing and gives you those metaphors. Um, and I think that would help a writer. I'm not sure. But yeah, 
something like that is certainly worth playing with. Uh, did we get it around to everybody? Did I miss anybody? <laughs> I think so. Oh, I'm punting. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm oh, are you punt. sure you are? Gonna... Okay. Do you, well, tell us about yeah. your experience, though, and then keep talking. Well, my experience was I was, I was, uh, I scripted the thinking partner, and I went in there and made some questions, and I was looking for my thinking partner and my choices. I couldn't find it, and then I went back try. I don't know if it was a refresh or what, and then I tried the change empath, and it it did. I didn't. I didn't work the workflow correctly. So, That's cool. Mm -hmm. a very. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry. So, so uh, it happens. Uh, <laughs> um, all right. So, I my hope is my hope is that uh, others will come in here and keep playing, um, and we kind of figure this out together. Um, I, Bob, you mentioned earlier that what we're learning is how to make prompts, but I think I, I don't want. I don't think we can do that alone. Um, you know, so doing it together, I think, is really important in sharing what we come up with. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, um, and Terry, I just want to, so I have used, and, and it sounds like you have also, like, learning, like, help having AI help us do the prompts is an interesting thing to do, too. So I've actually set up a template that lists five things that I think you need in a prompt and I could be wrong about those five things. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, that's one way to try to teach it. So then it comes up with the prompt for itself, right? So asking GPT-3, what would be a good prompt for you is an interesting thing for all of us to be thinking about and collecting those ideas. Mm -hmm. But th that's just my crazy thought here and we're way over time but anybody else want to say anything about your experience here tonight <laughs> i was i was just reminded again about it go when we think about pre-work and pre-thinking if you show up to this exercise with uh, with some ideas in your head mm -hmm. and you can you, you get much more out of it you're already sort of in this dialectic moment and the idea that people are going to be able to bring that to their first interaction with these systems is pretty, is really interesting in terms of what you need to do to get motivated, get oriented, be, mm -hmm. make yourself vulnerable and precise enough to summarize so that you can kind of get a handle on this. The other thing I'm struck by is that this prompt engineering is like an inversion. It's like a good cop, bad cop thing. You know, you say it one way and then you kind of got to mm -hmm. flip it around and say it another way and then you flip it back and and, and each time you're sort of spinning around your idea from a different perspective, it's really fascinating as an exercise of developing ideas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I just like the and different I, perspective. Sorry to interrupt, but just I was no, please. the different perspectives, you know, like looking at it like Neil Gaiman versus mm -hmm. what Bob had, you know, like, which I think is also in a really intriguing way to look at the text. But in all these different ways that we looked at the text, I think it probably, you know, it shows how it can make the reading richer. And Chris, I'm struggling with that, with the role of the text. Because like for me, the grail quest is, how do I get feedback on something I've written? Mm. Not use something that someone else has written to sure. kind of figure out how to get, like that, that's what I'm just curious about. Why are we using text at all? What's the purpose of now comment in all of this versus just designing great prompts and going straight to chat GD, you know, and putting in your own text or your own work or whatever. Like that's my curiosity. I've always had the same problem with, with uh, you know, tools like uh, hypothesis and now comment and Digo, where you generate, you get, get together with people of good intent and you generate a lot of comments and then nothing much happens from the comments. You know, there's no step further, to, to carry on the work that you've done. And some of this feels like that. Um, I mean, I, you know, I thought this was wonderful tonight and I'm thoroughly enjoying this, but you know, where is the text and what is the importance of the text? So, you know. Yeah. You need the text to, to, to do what you need to do. Can you just interact with the AI with a great prompt and some evidence of, of your own thinking or work product? But maybe that's, I mean, obviously in a teaching context, well, you're, you're doing text-based learning. So I get 
with, for students in K-12, that makes total sense. But for but adults, also, I'm not sure. But also in K-12, it but it gives the students the interchangeability of intellect. Yeah. Because yeah. Mo most times students think what is written on the page is what it is. Um, and through the thinking partner lens, their, their partners either question the text or highlight their thinking expertise when they create these partners on what the text didn't say and what the text isn't doing. Yeah. So it, it doesn't, what, what I was finding is that children were looking at themselves as the expert in the room. Um, yeah. when they created a thinking partner to interact with text. And then these children started figuring out how to use text, um, excuse me, use the thinking partners, Bob, for exactly what you said. Mm -hmm. How can I use this for my own writing? Nice. And they started thinking about that next. So. Wow. Love that. <laughs> yeah. Just, uh, you all know this, but just to put the technical point, you can also, you can put your own writing up in now comment and, mm -hmm. and use it that way. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, but 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 I think there's an interesting layer there where um, you're using the same uh, thinking partner that you used with a novel that you're using with your own writing. Um, mm -hmm. So that's perhaps interesting experience. Mm -hmm. I think some I think all these questions are really important and great. And um, yeah, I, I think we won't know till we get more of this out in front of kids and students mm -hmm. and and teachers and and see what happens. Um, we could go on. I want to thank you for spending this much time with us tonight. Thank you so much. Um, thanks, all. And let's thank thanks, everybody. Yes. Thanks, everybody. Good thanks, everybody. Really helpful. Good Good fun. Fun. Thanks. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you all. Good to meet you, Shelley. You as well. Thanks for inviting me in. Yeah, we're here every Wednesday night. Come back. Okay. Super. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Talk to. I'm becoming addicted to. <laughs> <laughs> All right, see you soon.